This is the front line of Nepal's hidden war. Combat police training for a campaign against an unseen foe. But rifle drill will be of little use when they march off to fight the enemy. A Maoist guerrilla force vowing to overthrow the government. The official death toll of this three-year conflict now stands at 700. But the real figure may be much higher. More than 2,000, between 2,000 to 3,000 people have been died in the past three years or so. And how many people are in jail who have been charged or are facing charges? Mm, I would say more than 2,000 again because in all these Maoist affected areas, the prisons are normally full and most of these people uh, are innocent or they have been uh, put in jail under fake charges, for example. And how many people have simply disappeared? In, in the past six months, for example, there have been many police operations, many police operations. So I would say, I would just guess that more than 500 people would have been uh, disappeared. Effectively controlling about 20% of rural Nepal, the obsessively secretive Maoists have avoided all contact with foreigners, with the notable exception of their ideological brethren, Peru's Shining Path movement. Now, for the first time, they agreed to emerge from the shadows to talk about their so-called people's war. Nepal, a destination of mountains and temples. For the tourists, it's a quick hit of boutique Buddhism. But this timeless spiritualism is enmeshed with poverty, a quaint backdrop for the tourist cameras, but a bleak existence if you actually have to live here in one of the world's poorest countries. Now, in desperation, many are embracing another faith, that of Mao Zedong. <laughs> Leave the tourist circuit behind, travel off the trekking routes, and you'll see a Nepal that hardly fits the peaceful postcard image. We're in the Dung Valley, Western Nepal, the Maoist heartland. With an infrared camera, we join the nightly combat police patrol. The police are on edge. There's a blackout, and they suspect the Maoists have blown up the power lines again. Few of these faces lit by oil lamps are friendly. As many as 70% of the people here support the Maoist cause. Villagers by day, become insurgents by night. A vague response that avoids the brutal reality. Police often shoot suspects on sight and torture is common. Every dead civilian automatically becomes a Maoist. Mm. 
The night passes without incident, but the next night's patrol isn't so lucky. One man is killed and four others wounded in an ambush. The survivors evacuated to this police hospital. They join a ward already full of wounded police and consider themselves lucky. Other detachments have been wiped out by moused hordes armed with knives, explosives and captured rifles. It becomes clear the situation is far worse than the government admits. Maoism may be a fading ideology just over the border in China, but it's rapidly gaining support here. To understand why, we leave the Dung Valley and head for the Maoist-controlled Himalayan foothills. To guarantee our safe passage, were escorted by a senior Maoist carter who risks being shot on sight at police roadblocks. Our presence attracts little interest. Police appear demoralised. They control little more than the ground they stand on and are preoccupied with surviving the night ahead. All eyes are upon us as we enter the town of Salyan, headquarters of what the Maoists call their base area. By now, everyone knows why we're here, yet no one dares approach us. There's a police surveillance team in the area, and we're told to wait for the cover of darkness. Finally, we're summoned to meet the local Maoist leaders. As with so many revolutionary movements, they're young, well-educated and city-bred, a world away from the rural masses they claim to lead. <laughs> What what is Maoism? Can can you provide me with a definition of what Maoism is? Sarvasan kisan, sarvagarib, piche dego zanjati lai ugarne. Ye kisam ko rasni vidal. Ra yo maavadi ko kei sataay bane. Sarvasan kisan thola bada lai saman rup mahirsa bane. Ra ilsum naamli sirasa. Police posts have been attacked and wiped out. Is that necessary? At dawn, the young carters are gone, and the quiet desperation of the place becomes apparent. 
These days, Nepal's King Birendra commands little more than the loyalty of his army. Until 1990, he'd ruled as an absolute monarch, showing scant regard for the welfare of his subjects. Then came people power and democracy, and expectations of reform in what was little more than a feudal kingdom. Into this brave new world marched a bewildering array of communist groups and factions who struck a chord with their promises of equality and economic reform. The largest, the United Marxist-Leninist Party, served in a series of unstable coalition governments that became mired by corruption and incompetence. In 1996, the Maoists accused the comrades of betraying the cause declared democracy a failure and launched their people's war. Politicians of all parties have been murdered, but the Maoists have a special retribution for the so-called class traitors. This united Marxist-Leninist candidate was virtually decapitated with a cookery knife while campaigning for re-election. The attack failed to stop the recent election, but drove the mainstream Marxists into a frenzy. Now, communist vows revenge against communist. The campaign speeches are big on retribution, but short on policies of rural reform, the very issue driving support for the Maoist revolt. The human rights lawyer Gopal Siwakati Shintan is one of the few people who dares confront the government over the People's War. He provides information to the United Nations on the growing litany of human rights abuses. Accused of collaboration with the Maoists, Chintan was arrested and later released without charge. But his extensive documentation of human rights abuses was confiscated. Psychologically speaking, politically speaking, uh, the government is losing the battle. Government is losing in the people's war. Because it has not been able to promote or to, to deliver any alternatives to what Maoists are claiming. Maoists are claiming not necessarily the Republic of Nepal like tomorrow. They are talking about food, they are talking against corruption, water, energy, you know, day-to-day -day basic needs of social and economic nature that everyone should be doing it. Reporting such views in Kathmandu is a dangerous business. Government's attempts to eliminate the Maoists have now broadened to include the arrest or disappearance of anyone who deviates from the official version of this war. I'd arranged a meeting with the journalists of the left-wing Jana Awan Weekly, a paper that runs interviews with the Maoists. Within minutes of my arrival, Deputy Editor Om Sharma with a beard and light brown short sleeve shirt, is seized by counter-terrorist police. As Om Sharma is led away, his editor, Bim Prakash, and several other journalists are arrested in raids across Kathmandu. Where are you taking him? Oh, yeah, office. Why? Why are you taking him to the office? Something is... Someone is calling him.
Excuse me, sir. You speak English. Why? Why are you taking this man to his, the office? A copy boy guides me to where his colleagues are being held, a police station in the heart of the tourist district. The journalists are being interrogated barely 20 metres away from one of the country's top attractions. I need to see the officer in charge. Officer in charge? Is in charge? In here? Right. I'm told the police chief is busy. Someone else will take care of me. Right. You want to know why why did Parkas is arrest by the police? That's right. Yeah. You Parkas. And four other journalists, one of whom I was having a meeting with an hour ago. You Parkas. I mean, what is this? What is this list? What? What, what is the list that you've got? What is, what is this? Oh. You Parkas. He's an editor of a newspaper. Yeah. And then uh, I was meeting with one of his associates, one of the journalists from the newspaper. You want to take an interview with me? No, I want to, I want to meet room for cash. But now you I want to see. What? What's wrong? No, it is not a good idea. Why not? I am not an authorised guy. Well, you're holding it. open or you close it. This is a democratic system. Everything is open. I cannot hide anything. So Until the election, Govinda Raj Joshi was Nepal's home minister in charge of police and internal security. Basically, the minister for the people's war. We have read the office and find out some uh, very important things concerning the Maoist activities. Well, well I'll, yes. I'll, I'll name one of the papers. Yeah, yeah. Jana, Jana Awan yes, Weekly, that, that, that is a, uh, a left-wing left -wing newspaper. Is, you've, yeah. you've arrested yeah. two journalists yes. and three support staff of that not, paper. Not as a journalist, but, you know, that was the mouth paper of the uh, mayor of the Maoist party, which is not legal in our country. And they are, they are just justifying the Maoist activities. But Nepal's Supreme Court disagreed. After Om Sharma and Bim Prakash had endured a month of interrogation, the court ordered their immediate release without charge. However, three other journalists are still missing and believed to be in police custody. Out in Salyan, few people comprehend Maoist ideology. For them, it's simply a matter of supporting a movement that's trying to improve their lot. In a nation where 85% of the people still don't have electricity, the Maoists provided a practical solution. Shopkeepers were organised into a local co-op to buy an old generator. Now, the maintenance man risks arrest as a collaborator. Around Salyan, people have been killed for far lesser offences. This is this is your husband. Mm. Buma Kamari is a 27-year-old widow with four children. Her husband, Hemraj, was village development chairman, basically the mayor of Salyan. A loyal member of the mainstream Communist Party, his community activities gained the respect of the Maoists. <laughs> His brother, Jump Lal, who also opposes the Maoists, now does what he can to help around the farm. It was Jump Lal who witnessed the death of his brother last year while attempting to stop police from beating two students. Namarnos, Mulaipan Namarnos, Ulaipan Namarnos. 
मानव अधिकार को हनन बो दोष बिया कार्रवाई करनो ठाना मरते हो कि मलिनोस बंदा उन लोग ना मानी गोलियां हैं ना चाहे यहाँ तेरा गोलियां हैं नेरा ये नेरा हानी का थिया है ये सरी डाले आ पधारे तेहले पुलेले तेहला मारी सही आप थी तो आप ऐले धंधा ये उटा तरुवाल ले आगो रही था तेज का सामने तो जो मेरा भाई को सामने जान लास्ट था तेज को अगाडी फाले रा उसले फोटा खींचे रे यो माव बादी हो धंधा बोके रा आए को थियो हथियार सहित मरामत मरामत गरीब बने रा उसले फोटो खींचे रे लिया था। We've been up in the Salyan area. There was the head of a village development committee who tried to intervene and stop police beating two students. He was basically executed in the village in front of dozens of people. This was the head of a village. No, no. And nothing, nothing has happened. Nothing has been done. That's a well-documented case. That's only one. <coughs> no, no. Maybe, but I have not, that that case has not come to me up to this stage. But there were uh. there were dozens of witnesses. Dozens no, 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 of witnesses. No, no. I, I I don't believe it. It happened in broad daylight. I do. I don't believe it. Until now, the government has resisted the temptation to call in the army. Senior police fear the military's greater firepower will lead to a massive increase in civilian casualties and play straight into the Maoists' hands. So it's a surprise to see an army battalion of 600 men setting up camp in Salyan. Officially, they're building roads, but there isn't a grader or shovel in sight. Please, don't take pictures, right? With a hidden camera still running, the officers become somewhat more candid. Why, 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 has, why have they suddenly decided to construct a road now? In the, in the middle of the, with the election? And... <laughs> Is that a good question? Or... Intelligent question. <laughs> Can you tell me? Can you tell me the answer? Maybe uh, that's... Uh... It can be due to political pressure or something. Can Security a, problem also. It can be a yeah. sort of mm. a political that campaign, you see. Explicit. Maybe yes, political I interest <laughs> plus uh, security. As soon as you involve military into the conflict, it will be a declaration of civil war, a kind of permanent civil war. So they are trying to avoid it. They are trying to avoid it. So military has been used, but in civilian dress or by other means, for example, not directly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see I've raised slot set not say as well as my cousin from the right window. For foreigners searching for a little mountain mysticism, a few dollars buys you Mount Everest's inner piece and a T-shirt. The government may be losing the Hearts and Minds campaign, but it has managed to hide the scale of this conflict from the outside world and keep those precious tourist dollars flowing in. But if the Maoists get their way, that could all change. They dream of a Nepal transformed into a red fort with the hammer and sickle flying firmly over Everest. <laughs>